Well, hello again. In the last video, where we saw the Miele C3 complete, we were struggling with a burnt out motor. Now, I was thinking to myself, what can I do here? What can I do with this? These are quite specialized motors and they are very expensive. So there must be some kind of work around here. And funnily enough, there is. Let me show you how I did it. Yeah, so this is quite interesting. I kind of had an idea in my mind in the last video and it all came down to the Miele's electronics. Let me change you around a bit so you can see what I've got on the bench. Ooh, look at that, a motor wired up to the Miele. Hmm. Let me talk you through it. So this is the uh, cover for the C3, which has a connector coming out of it. So this connector basically is a feed from the controls at the top here. So you've got the plus and minus up and down power regulator. Now these, that board that's up there in and of itself doesn't do very much. It just sends the electricity down to, to the motor with a signal that needs to be interpreted by some electronics. And the electronics for the speed controller actually reside in this little box here. You can see the triac there. Now that normally sits in that slidey section there of the um, original motor. So I took it out and it turns out that I was right. There's two connectors that come out of this control module and interface with the field coil on the Miele's original motor. So all I had to do, all I had to do was take a feed from this little control box into a new motor. And we've got this one. Now, as you can see, a bit of a bodge job here because it's a bit shorter than the original Miele motor. Not by much, but just enough to cause a problem. So, I've had to mount the uh, the rear bracket. <laughs> I actually put some wood screws through. Uh, this should be fine because it will still be compressed with, within the within the body like that. But this is just to stop it talking because when the motor starts, well, there actually is a soft start on this machine, so it's not so much of a big problem. But those screws that are connected to the rear mount will hold the motor in place. So yeah, they were definitely, definitely needed. And then we just got a couple of wires here, and as I say, run to the uh, speed control module, which in itself connects up to the loom. Uh, which way does it go? That way. So when that is connected to the loom, like that, this speed controller will control the new motor. So let me give you a demonstration. So I can control the speed of the motor with the uh, with the pedals on the top up, up and down over here so let's turn it on see what happens And as you can see, the control panel perfectly regulates the speed of this replacement motor. I don't even know what this motor is actually. I think it's just a cheap piece of Chinese shit that I've happened to have hanging around. It does seem to be quite powerful actually. It's um, it, it's on par with the Miele's original motor, which is really good. In fact, wasn't that an 860 watt motor? This is probably 1200 watts. So we, we, we might get a bit more power out of the machine. Um, so now we just need to get the motor mounted successfully in the base. And I'm going to do that now off camera because it's going to be a pain in the bum. And then I'll come back to you when I've got it in place. Okay. Well, this is my master plan, guys. Okay. As you can see, the motor is in situ. It's actually quite tight in there. Um, and I think it should work because it's kind of squeezed in place between two seals at the front. Not the, not the <laughs> seals, but uh, two seals thusly. So that's not going to move. It's a soft start anyway. And it is being held in place by 
the bracket at the back. So that's all looking pretty good. I'm just like fiddling now because I'm trying to think, oh, is it is it in exactly right where I want it and will it stay there? And I've mounted the control module to the side of the motor here. So what I'm thinking is it's kind of in line of some airflow here. So that will keep it relatively cool, even though this motor runs quite hot. So now all I need to do is to reconnect the uh, this plug, oh, that's come out from there, God damn it. Um, and then put the top back on and then we'll see if it runs. So yeah, let's do that. Well, I've got it back to this position now. Um, the motor's mounted, it's in there. I did have to have a bit of a change of plan with the uh, control module. That's kind of just floating in there now because there's no real place to actually mount it in there. If I mounted it on the motor, it just fell off. If I mounted it up here, it interfered with the fan casing. It was like, oh my God, damn you. Um, but having said all that, There's a motor in there and it's working. And you know what? It's so bloody hot, I am quitting for the day. I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow and finish off the video. And now I'm gonna have a very stiff drink. Cheers.